I am pleased to welcome you back to the second video. In this section, um, we'll briefly review the probability and statistics section following our previous discussion on linear algebra and calculus. Probability and statistics are essential tools for data analysis and decision making, and we'll focus on um, consolidating the fundamental concepts and key themes. This review will help solidify the basic ideas you already know and provide a clear understanding of core concepts in probability and statistics. So, let's get started. I will firstly tell you the detailed overview of fundamental concepts in probability theory. The sample space omega represents the set of all possible outcomes, illustrated here as HH, HT, TH, TT, for the experiments of living two coins. Element A is the subset of the sample space representing specific outcomes of interest such as HH for the event where both coins show has. The event space script F is the collection of all possible events forming a sigma or zebra which includes the sample space, empty set, and is closed under unions, intersection, and complements. The probability measure P is the function that assigns the probability to each event in um, the script F, satisfying conditions like um, P omega equals 1 and P A is non-negative. Additionally, for mutually exclusive events, the probability of their union is the sum of their individual probabilities. This concept forms a theoretical foundation of probability theory essential for fields like statistics and machine learning. And about conditional probability and independence. Conditional probability P A given B is the probability of an event A occurring given that another event B has occurred and is calculated using the formula P A given B equals P A and B over P B, where P A and B is the probability of both A and B occurring together, and PB is the probability of B occurring. Independence between two events A and B means that the occurrence of one does not affect the probability of the other. Mathematically expressed as P A and B is um, equals pro product of P A and P B. For independence event, the the conditional probability simplifies to P A given B equals P A, and also P B given A equals P B, indicating that knowing the occurrence of one event does not change the probability of the other occurrence. And here we got random variable. What is random variable? A random variable is a function that converts the outcomes of random events into numbers, making it easier to analyze and work with them. In this case, um, this, this sequence consists of 10 elements where H stands for hairs and T stands for tail in coin tosses. And here RV stands for um, random variable and X is a random variable that maps from the sample space omega to the set of real numbers R. Value x refers to the set of all possible possible values that the random variable x can take, and x omega represents the set of values that x k takes for each element in the sample space omega. And lastly, uh, value x is the set of possible values that x can assume, which are integers from 0 to 10. The cumulative distribution function CDF is a function that represents the probability that a random variable x takes on a value less than or equal to a specific value x. Mathematically, it is defined as shown um, formula, which provides the cumulative probability up to x. The graph of CDF is typically non-decreasing and reflecting that as the value x increases, the cumulative probability also increases. For continuous random variables, the CDF is obtained by integrating the probability density function, PDF, resulting in a smooth uh, curve that starts at 0 and approaches 1. For discrete random variables, I'll 
explain later. The CDF appears as a step function, where each step represents the cumulative probability up to a given value. The CDF is a crucial tool for understanding and analyzing the distrib distribution of data. And right here, this is a contrast between discrete and uh, the continuous random variables. Discrete random variables have countable values with the probability mass function, PMF, summing to 1 across all possible values. Continuous random variables, on the other hand, have uncountable values described by the probability density function, PDF, where the integral over the entire range equals 1, and the probability of any single point is 0. And I will introduce the concepts of expected value and variance for random variables. The expected value, calculated differently for discrete and continuous random variables, represents the average outcome of a function gx over many realizations of x. For discrete variables, it's the sum of gx multiplied by the probability px(x), while for continuous variables, it's the integral of gx times the probability density function, fxx. Variance, on the other hand, measures the spread of x around its mean and is calculated as difference between the expected value of x square and the square of the expected value of x. And here are some example distributions. Bernoulli distribution, firstly, represents the outcome of single trial with a success probability of p. And binomial distribution models the number of successes in n independent Bernoulli trials. And geometric distribution represents the number of trials until the first success. And Poisson distribution describes the number of events occurring in a fixed interval of time or space. In uniform distribution, it represents a continuous random variables uniformly distributed over the interval A to B. And Gaussian distribution, also known as the normal distribution, characterized by its mean and variance. Lastly, exponential distribution models the time between events in Poisson process with a constant hazard rate lambda. And this is the case when we have two random variables. The bivariate CDF gives the probability that the random variables x and y will simultaneously be less than or equal to x and y respectively. It provides a way to describe the joint distribution of two random variables. And the bivariate PMF represents the probability that discrete random variables x and y take on, um, take on specific values x and y respectively. This function is crucial for understanding the joint distribution in the case of discrete variables. And the marginal PMF of x is derived by summing the joint PMF over all possible values of y. It provides the probability distribution of x alone, regardless of y. And the bivariate PDF is the joint density function for continuous random variables x and y. It represents the density of the joint probability at specific points and is obtained by taking the second partial derivative of the bivariate CDF with respect to both x and y. Lastly, the marginal PDF of x is calculated by integrating the joint PDF over all possible values of y. This function provides the probability density of x alone, independent of value of y. In Bayes' theorem, it provides a method for calculating the probability of an event based on conditional probabilities. This formula allows us to update the prior probability of an event with new data to obtain the posterior probability. Uh, the formula is expressed by shown, and the Bayes' theorem is very useful for making decisions and improving predictions in situations of uncertainty. And ta-da! Here is an example problem that I thought of. It'd be great to pause for a moment and think about it together. I'll go ahead and provide the solution. 
So here's the solution. A disease has a prevalence rate of 4%, and a test for the disease has 98% sensitivity, and a 7% false positive rate. If someone tests positive for the disease, we want to determine the probability that they actually have the disease, right? To find this, we use Bayes' theorem. First, we calculate the overall probability of positive test result by combining the probabilities of positive results given both disease and no disease. This results in overall probability of 10.64%. And applying Bayes' theorem, we find that the probability of having the disease given a positive test result is approximately 36.8%. This, even with a positive test result, there is still about a 36.8% chance that the person actually have the disease. And when two random variables x and y are independent, their joint probability or density function can be expressed as the product of their individual marginal probability or density functions. Specifically, for discrete random variables, the joint probability is pxy equals product of the px and py. And the conditional probability is py given x equals py. For continu continuous random variables, the joint probability density function is fxy equals product of x, fx and fy. And the conditional probability density function is fy given x equals fy. This indicates that the distribution of y does not depend on x and vice versa. And you can see the sample question about independence. Given a fair coin and die where the probability of heads or tails is 0.5, and the probability of rolling an even number 246 is also 0.5, we can calculate the probabilities as follows. For the joint probability of getting heads and rolling an even number, we use the formula pH and even equals product of pH and pEven which results in a product of 0.5 and 0.5 equals 0.25. Since the coin and the die are independent, the probability of has, um, given that an even number is rolled remains pH given even equals pH equals 0.5. And about expectation. The expected value is calculated by integrating the product of the function and their joint probability density function over all possible values of x and y. Um, this is expressed mathematically as shown, where the double integral sums the contribution of g, x, and y, weighted by their likelihood as defined by f, x, and y. Well, suppose x and y are continuous random variables representing the heights and weights of individuals, respectively, with a joint probability density function f, x, and y. If you want to find the expected value of f function g, x, and y equals x plus y, which represents the sum of height and weight, um, we would calculate it using the formula e, x plus y. Here, g, x, and y um, is the function of interest, and f, x, and y is the joint density function of x and y. By integrating the product um, over all possible values of x and y, we obtain the average value of sum of height and weight for individuals according to their joint distribution. And we have covariance. In probability theory, uh, covariance quantifies the degree to which two random variables change together and is defined as covariance x and y. This measure indicates if an increase in one variable corresponds to an increase or decrease in another. If x and y are independent, their covariance is zero because the expectation of their product equals the product of their individual expectations. When calculating the variance of, of the sum in general, the formula is variance x plus y equals variance x plus variance y plus two covariance x and y. Um, and, but for independent variables, the covariance term drops out 
simplifying the variance calculation to variance x plus y equals variance x plus variance y. And there is an alternative way to compute variance, which involves finding the expected value of squared sum and subtracting the square of the expected sum. And the multivariate Gaussian distribution describes the probability density of a random vector x in real n. It is characterized by its mean vector and covariance matrix. The probability density function is given by the formula, and here x is random vector, mu is mean vector, and sigma is covariance matrix. The determinant and its inverse help scale the distance of x from mu, measured by the Mahalanobis distance. The PDF shows how likely it is to observe the vector x, taking into account the distribution's mean and variance structure. And now, this image contains a set of visualizations illustrating the effects of different covariance metrics on a two-dimensional normal distribution. And this image is divided into four quadrants, each containing three examples. Here is a breakdown of each quadrant. Firstly, top left quadrant. This section shows the effect of changing the diagonal values of covariance metrics while keeping the off-diagonal values at zero, which means that there is no correlation between the variables. First graph, um, this is a standard Gaussian distribution with no correlation, where both x1 and x2 have unit variance. The contour plot is circular. Below, the variance of x1 and x2 is reduced, making the contour plot smaller, but still circular. Lastly, um, the variance of x1 and x2 is increased, enlarging the contour plot, but it, it remains also circular. And next, top right quadrant. This section demonstrates the effect of introducing positive correlations between x1 and x2 by using positive off-diagonal values in the covariance matrix. First one is the same as the example in the top left quadrant. And below, a positive correlation is introduced. The contour plot is now elliptical and tilt along the line. Line is x1 equals x2. And below, a stronger positive correlation further tilts and elongates the elliptical contour. Inversely, the bottom right quadrant shows the effect of introducing negative correlations between x1 and x2 using negative off-diagonal values in the covariance matrix. All is the same, but the uh, different thing is the line is the x1 equals minus x2. And lastly, bottom left quadrant. This section shows the effect of changing the diagonal value of covariance matrix, similar to the top left quadrant, but with different values. Firstly, uh, first, first graph is the, um, again, a standard Gaussian distribution with no correlation. But below, the variance in the x1 direc direction is reduced, resulting in an elliptical contour plot where the ellipse is narrower along the x1 axis. And the variance in the x1 direction, the third one, is increased, leading to an elliptical contour plot where the ellipse is stretched along the x1 axis. And about conditional probability and conditional expectations. They describe the behavior of random variables under certain conditions. For discrete random variables, the conditional probability py given x is py and x over px. The conditional expectation ey given x is sum of y product py given x. For continuous random variables, the conditional probability density function is f y given x, and the conditional expectation is integral of y product f y given x. Now think about this title. The statement that e x given y is random variable means that e x given y depends on the value of y and changes as y changes. For example, um, consider a situation where x represents a student's test score and y represents the number of hours studied. 
If the conditional expectation EX given Y is given by, um, for example, 0 0.5 Y plus 5 or 10, then this function varies based on the um, number of hours studied, right? I mean, Y. Oh, we are almost there. The law of total expectation. Um, it states that you can calculate the expected value of random variables Y, I know X, using conditional expectations. It says that the overall expected value EX is the average of the conditional expectations EX given Y, weighted by the probabilities of Y. In formula terms, it, this is written as follows. This means you can break down the expectation into parts um, based on different conditions and then average their, those parts. Oh, last slide. Um, Bayes' theorem with more conditions involves calculating the expected value of A given multiple conditions. For example, E A given B and C means finding the expected value of A when both conditions B and C are known. Um, here, more conditions refers to con considering more than one condition in the calculation. This extension is the basic Bayes' theorem, which typically deals with only one condition. By incorporating um, multiple conditions, you can handle more complex scenarios and refine predictions. So, this concludes the explanation of probability theory. Thank you for listening despite any shortcomings in the presentation. I haven't covered all the theory, only providing a br brief introduction, so I encourage you to pursue further study on your own. Thank you!